to Misha's World Kitchen. Well today we're off to beautiful Italy, Italia, and I'm going to show you how to make a traditional carbonara, which of course is only made one way. It's really a Roman uh, dish, very popular in Rome. Forget about cream, forget about all the other extra things you've gotten in restaurants. This is how you make it. First of all, come in close and I'll show you some of the traditional ingredients. You can either use spaghetti or spaghettone, which is the thicker type of spaghetti. Today I'm using pappardelle, which is a, a thick, flat, almost like a tagliatelle, but actually bigger. This is an egg pappardelle. And then I've got the most important thing. This is the hero. This is called guanciale. There it is, guanciale. And it is a cured cheek of pork, of the pig. Uh, and it's soft. If you can't find it, you can actually use pancetta or speck or even bacon, which is obviously what a lot of restaurants use because it's cheaper. Guanciale is a more expensive cut, but this is traditionally how to make it. So, and I've also got some extra really wonderful things for you today. I have got some pecorino with truffle, truffle infused pecorino that will go into my egg cream. And then I've got some fresh truffle. Well, it's not fresh, sorry. It's uh, carpaccio of truffle so I've got to add that and then a little bit of truffle dust white and black truffle dust yum yum so let's start off with chilling uh, uh, let's start off with chopping the guanciale so just some rough pieces don't worry about making it too pretty it's going to um, go into the pan here in some hot olive oil don't forget as you're cutting to use your claw technique let your knuckles guide the blade. Don't do what I do sometimes and forget and chop my finger off. And so you want relatively large bits like this. Yep, when they nicely pop into the mouth. Now all this fat that is on the guanciale will render in the pan and you'll get quite a lot of fat. And I'll show you how to get rid of that without disturbing the actual contents. All you'll need is some kitchen towel, paper towel, and we can soak up the extra. But we do want some of it left because that will bond with the egg yolk cream that I'm preparing soon. And that's what will give the carbonara its texture that will drag it all together. So I'm going to use this much. It's quite salty, so you don't want to add salt at all at this stage. You only can add pepper and then you won't need to add salt at the end. The only little bit of salt I've got is in here in the hot water for the parpadella. It'll take about 10 minutes to cook. Now, here's the thing. With pasta, do not put oil in here. I don't know who invented that, but it's crap. I've seen many chefs on TV say, add olive oil. All you need to do is rapidly boiling water, keep the pasta moving, it won't stick together. But don't put oil in there, it's really not good. Over here, I've got three whole eggs with the whites and one extra egg yolk, salt and pepper. We're just going to give those a light beat. I'm warming my pan here. No, I'm not going to cook the eggs because that would be scrambled egg and that's what we don't want. That's why after we cook the guanciale, we let it cool down. And the reason we let it cool down is so that it doesn't scramble the egg because we want the egg to be like a zabaglione, like a custard here. So, pop in the guanciale. Let it sizzle away. And you'll notice that I've got olive oil, of course, extra virgin olive oil. And what I'm going to do is I'll get the pecorino and I'm going to just lightly use um, a grater or a microplane and grate some into the cream here. I'll, of course, dress the pecorino over the um, parpadelle when we, when we set it. So that's enough for there. Let me turn that down so it doesn't burn. It's the last one we want. And just incorporating that truffle pecorino, my god, you should smell the truffle coming out of that already. It's so good. Yep. So, you can see, just bounce this around. 
and this will crisp up very nicely. I've got the water ready to boil, so come back in about 10 minutes and we'll do the next stage. I have the pappardelle ready to strain off, the sauce ready, the guanciale ready, and I'll be ready to plate up. So I'll see you in a few minutes. Mmm, manja, manja. Welcome back. Here we're going to put it together now. So what I've done is, as you can see, I've fried the guanciale. I've let it cool. It's really important that you let it cool. Okay. I've got a big platter here. If you come over this way, you can see the parapadele has been boiled. I've drained off as much water as I can. And now I'm going to add it in here into the guanciale. It's very gently start to stir it through. I've got to be careful with this pan because it's a um, very good Teflon pan and I don't want to get it mixed up. So let me just get another wooden implement. There we go. And just start separating out the parpadelle and stirring through the guanciale. Now the oil will start to, and fat, We'll start to coat the pappardelle, which is what we want in stage one. Now, you notice when they cure the pappardelle, it goes quite dark. That's because it's obviously being cured with uh, salt and sugar. I suspect there's some other colouring agent in there, maybe annatto oil, to give it that darker orange flavour and look. But it's coming along really well. So just coating all those strands, making sure that when I add in my cream sauce, which is really beaten egg and the pecorino, we're ready to roll. Okay. So, next stage, the beaten egg and the pecorino. Now this is why we want this to be just warm, because it's going to be served straight away. There's no waiting around. And we don't want this to end up being, thank you Alexa, we don't want this being, uh, end up being scrambled egg. So as you can see, no cream, no other special ingredients. This is just all natural. Thank you, Alexa. That's my personal assistant. She's telling me to check the pasta. Thanks, Alexa. That's enough. Wow, look at that. And you can see the egg starting to come together and starting to thicken like a custard. And that's exactly what we want. And of course, it mixes with the oil and the fat. And that's what brings out the flavor. And that's basically it. So I'm going to plate that up now. I've got a big serving platter here. Straight onto a platter. Wow. And I can already smell that truffle coming through. It's absolutely amazing. Then I'm going to finish off with some truffle pecorino. And truffle lovers, you'll be jealous. And then, oh, 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 I've got some freshly shaved truffles. Oh, look at that. And of course with truffle, you only need a small amount because it's got such a great, strong, infusive perfume, the bouquet, hard to describe. And then, yeah, the truffle dust, which is a mixture of white and black truffle Almost like a fine white pepper. And then, just some black pepper. And there you have a traditional carbonara with tartufo. I hope you can smell it from here, it's so fantastic. I'll tell you how it tastes. See you next time. Bye. Bye.